I want to welcome everyone to another exciting hour of NWA Mountain State Wrestling. I am the graduate Michael Mann alongside my broadcast partner. The outlaw rock star and pretty boy redneck, your hillbilly hero, sweet Stephen Hensley. And we want to thank CORE for having us as part of their community fair this year. This hour's main event is the Meister taking on one third of the Gifter Rods. Derek Billings in a first for NWA Mountain State Wrestling, a coal miner's glove match, plus much more. This is Commissioner Larry Light. If you'd like to see the great TV stars of NWA Mountain State Wrestling come to your town, give us a call at area code 304-673-2054 or check us out on the web at mountainstatewrestling.com. Well, at least you know the numbers won't get to J.C. Dykes with the gift arrive standing out here. Yeah, you, you never know. I mean, but what is it, three on two? It's still an advantage for the gift arrives, but they're still both very dangerous. Well, it's funny to me that you would say that J.C. Dykes Jr. having Carl in his corner would be an advantage of any kind or support of any kind after the way Sir Carlton's head has not been in the game the last couple of weeks. A few weeks ago, we saw in the number one contenders tag team match how he cost himself and his brother a shot at the championship. His head may not be in the game that much, but you got to think of it. His, his head is just in a different place. His head may be in a different place, but in this business, your head had better be on the match at hand or you're going to get eaten alive. And what a disrespectful show of appreciation for King Richard from the Muppets of the Mountain Would State. Would you come on? The fans are just acting the way that they think that they want to react for King Richard. They don't like him, so let them react. Let them have freedom of speech here. It's the First Amendment. Well, I respect the right to freedom of speech, but the fans in this arena should respect the fact that they're getting ready to see a man compete who has been touched by God. That man is a monster in this business. He is a megastar in the making. He is the leader of the hottest faction in this business today. He's accompanied to the ring by the future of wrestling Brian Kyle and Dynamite, Dynamite, Derek Billings. Well, I'm glad that you like you let them you completely went over JC Dykes there. They do yeah. JC Dykes Jr. He is gonna do great things in this match. We'll just have to see. It's about ready to start the action. And there's the foul. This match is officially underway. Well, JC Dykes Jr. may do a lot of impressive things in this match, but the one thing I promise you he's not going to do is walk away with the victory. He may look a lot he may look rough around the edges, but I guarantee you that this match is gonna be interesting. As long as they can keep the gift to Raj out of his, out of his head, then I think JC Dykes could possibly walk away with the victory here. We'll just have to see. J.C. Dykes Jr. could possibly sprout wings and fly to the top of this arena, but I don't think that's going to happen either. Right, and you see now... Tie up by King, oh, slapped to the face by King Richard. That is just blatant disrespect. What is the point of that? Winning this match is impressive wrestling. And he is an impressive wrestler. You can see right there dragging Richard's legs out from the corner, just bringing him up in the head, driving him down to the canvas. But a kick out by King Richard there, making use of his presence of mind and his veteran-like instincts. King Richard was in the corner calling for a timeout, and he rolls out of the ring to get, to get words from his boys. Well, you should certainly give the king whatever he wants. This is his kingdom. He is the champion, and you must show him respect. And what he's doing right now is cutting off the momentum that J.C. Dykes Jr. had in place during the midsection of this contest. But you got to remember, you have to remember, that clock is ticking. Seconds are going by right now. And King Richard knows that. And the longer he draws this out, the longer he takes to get in the ring, the less of an opportunity that Dykes is going to have to get the victory. Well, the referee got a full count tonight right there. And now he's let, is King Richard, is he getting, letting this crowd get to him tonight? Well, King Richard is not going to let this crowd get to him because King Richard, unlike J.C. Dykes and the glad handers in the back, doesn't care what the fans think. The only thing he cares about is whether or not he's going to walk out of this match as champion. And that is one of the reasons that he will. And excuse me, excuse me, let me back up there. Not walk out as champion, but walk out of here without having to think about having a match against that mangy muck next week. Well, he may look a little rough around the edges, but I'm telling you, J.C. Dykes Jr., he has a lot of knowledge and experience in behind him, and I really think that he's got a really good chance in this match. Has he reversed it? Then reversed the arm bar, and now he's pulling him. Oh, nice wrist lock by arms. Dykes. Kick to the arms, and you see King Richard grimacing in pain in the corner. 
Dyke's going back to the arm, and this is a good strategy. Take away one of the tools of the big man with that broad base of his upper body. And as stout as King Richard is, you certainly don't want him to lock his arms around you. Comes out of the corner, and a power slam with authority by King Richard. And you see King Richard standing over Dykes. Dykes looking up, maybe seeing the stars right now. And while he may have thought Christmas was coming twice at the onset of this match, when he learned he would have the opportunity to possibly get a title shot, certainly now he's hearing jingle bells in his head, but it's not a good thing. It's not a sign of Christmas wishes to come. It's a sign of the end in sight. Oh, would you stop it? This crowd is, is favorably cheering for J.C. Dykes right now as he just lays the boots to J.C. Dykes Jr. Well, this crowd may be favorably behind J.C. Dykes Jr., but the fans certainly aren't going to help him win a match. And you see Dykes thrown to the outside oh like God, a piece look of garbage. Oh, outside interference. Come on. You can call this outside interference. I call this tough love. They're trying to well, motivate. What is Carl doing? Look up there. Carl distracting the ref. Carl's certainly not doing his brother any favors. Distracting him again. It's like I said, you call him support for this match. I call him an anchor that's weighing J.C. Dykes Jr. down. Oh, well, we'll just have to see. He's got his head in a lot of places right now, so we'll just have to see his time to play now. Thunderous blows to the head of Dykes, who's looking rocked right now. And King Richard having a great time. Big boot sandwich to the face of Dykes Jr. And you see King Richard just scouting a man, looking for the weaknesses, taking apart the lower back of J.C. Dykes Jr. right now. And you see him with a kneeling surfboard into the back of Dykes, just pulling back on those arms, tracing all of that weight going back against the knee of King Richard. Well, J.C. Dykes, he's really got this crowd in behind him now. The crowd chanting J.C., J.C., and he goes for the reversal. And he misses the clothesline there, and... Oh, up slams to the mat. Big crossbody blocked by ball. Dykes, but not enough. Dykes, if he'd been more in this contest, may not have fell victim to that clothesline just now and may have been able to make better use of that crossbody block that he had just a moment ago. But King Richard has been so firmly in control of this contest for so long right now that Dykes doesn't know what he's in for. He doesn't know how he's going to get back up from this and you can see in his eyes right now he may be a beaten man. The psychological advance of the champion may be too much for him and you see King Richard sitting down in the back torquing the upper body of J.C. Dykes and you can just see that look of pain in his eyes. He may be forced to get this one up. He just drives him down to the canvas there. You gotta love hard hitting hillbilly action like this, don't you? Oh, absolutely. You can only find this in NWA Mountain State Wrestling. You certainly can't find it anywhere else. Oh, Lord no. Now yeah, JC with a couple punches. Oh, and a roll up. A one, two, and a kick out by King Richard. King Richard, first man back up to his feet and a kick to the head of Dykes, stopping all that temporary momentum he had mounted, falling with a double axe handle smash onto the lower back. And you just see, focusing on that one body part, dissecting the body, taking apart the human anatomy, that's what it's all about in high profile matches like this, and a double arm into a nice modified butterfly suplex by King Richard. And King Richard goes to the pin, and one, two, and, oh, Jay-Z Dykes Jr. barely gets the shoulder up. And you talked about the technical wizardry early on in the match of J.C. Dykes Jr. And we forget a lot of times looking at King Richard. He looks a lot more like a brawler, but he has a lot of knowledge behind him too. He is a veteran wrestler of this business. And if you take him for granted at any point, like you should never take a champion for granted anyway, he will take you apart. And a nice suplex out of nowhere by Dykes. Absolutely. Oh, he flips over onto King Richard. Goes to the pinball. One, two, and a kick out by King Richard. It's certainly not going to be that easy for Dykes, no matter what he does at this point. King Richard has made control of this contest for too long now, and he's much fresher than Dykes. He can survive those high-impact maneuvers at this point because even, even if J.C. Dykes hits him, he's still the fresher of the two men. Well, Steve, I have to ask you, what kind of a toll has this match taken on both of these competitors? Both of these competitors, you know, this, this has been a pretty hard-hitting match. Well, the price you pay for competing in this business is a terrible, terrible price anyway. It takes your body apart, it wears and tears those joints. But the one thing you have to remember is the toll that Dykes has incurred during this match is much more severe than the toll that King Richard has incurred. That may not have been the smartest move in the world, going up against Dykes with a headbutt. Dykes already has that thick toll, but you see right there the suplex by King Richard, who did not lose focus despite rocking himself. One, two, and a kick out. 
out by J.C. Dykes. That suplex. He, I'm telling you, King Richard is just absolutely amazing at suplexing. He certainly is. It's that stocky body of his. He's able to just hold on to your head so tightly that you're suffering so much damage before the maneuver is even completed. You're not going to break once his arms are locked around you. And he pushes Dykes off the ropes. Going for a backcracker. Dykes rolls over him. The one, the two, and I cannot believe my eyes. I cannot believe my eyes. If you believe in Cinderella stories, ladies and gentlemen, this is one in the making. So now J.C. Dykes Jr. gets a shot at King Richard's title. He certainly does. I don't think the gift garage can believe this. The Cinderella of the trailer park just pulled off the upset victory of the year. Oh, now, come on. They're making excuses up there. You're that in the side. And you see the gift garage looking on at the luckiest man in Mountain State Wrestling, J.C. Dykes Jr. Now, let's hear a word from our sponsor, Wesley H. White. West Virginia has some of the strongest consumer credit protection laws in the nation. If you have been receiving multiple phone calls from debt collectors, credit card companies, and even other law firms trying to collect a debt from you or a family member, you may be entitled to compensation. Call Wesley White for a free case evaluation to see if your rights have been violated by unfair debt collection. We'll get you compensated. We'll stop the phone calls. Call Wesley today at 304-664-9201. Now let's get comments from the legit hit Brian Kyle about his match upcoming with Carl. Brian Kyle, tonight you face Carl, one of the most unorthodox wrestlers in Mountain State Wrestling. What tactics are you going to use to ensure victory? You know what, Jonathan Styles? I need no tactics. I need no game plan. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to do what I do best. Carl? You know what, when you accepted this non-title match with me, you signed your death wish. Do you know who I am? Do you know what group I'm a part of, Carl? You don't know me! Tonight, Jonathan Styles, <laughs> you better watch out for that lariat, boy, because it's coming at your head. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're sitting at home doing the crosswords right now, and you want a nine-letter word for the future of professional wrestling, look no further than Brian Kyle. Will you stop being so partisan? Come on, just call the match. Stick to You may ask me to be partisan, but the one thing I will never be is anything less than honest. And you can see a look of disgust by J.C. Dykes for the impromptu, poorly performed introduction that he just received. He's been feeling overlooked for a while and he certainly doesn't want to be overlooked. He's feeling right now that he should be at the top of the world and he certainly should be respected after the victory that he just received moments ago. And there you see Your the body. Mountain State Wrestling Television Champion of the World, the future of our business, the legit hit, Brian Kyle. That's your buddy. That's your buddy. We'll see how Lord Carlton decides. He might have a wrestling clinic if he can keep the gift to Raj out of this match. Wrestling clinic, the man should be put in a clinic. And after this match, he will most likely be put in the hospital. But one thing that I need to tell you that I was noticing earlier this evening when I showed up, when they were in the back talking over interviews, oh, Carl, with a nice you looked over in the corner, you saw J.C. Dykes Jr. and Carl sitting off to the side, not saying a word to each other. You see, saw the entourage on the other corner of that locker room. They're laughing, but they were talking over strategy too. They have their heads in the game. They have their support behind each other. I don't believe that J.C. Dykes and Carl have the same chemistry that they had three weeks ago tonight. You can never discount Carl. He has a lot of heart no matter where his head is at. Well, he pushes your boy into the corner. Well, he may have a lot of heart, but if he gets caught with that big lariat by Brian Kyle, he's not going to have a head on his shoulders. The crowd getting into this match, getting behind Lord Carlton. And you see Kyle and Sir Carlton searching each other. Kyle comes out of the corner but stops himself before he incurs any damage and he fires back with those big right hand shots to the jaw of Sir Carlton. Sir Carlton, the big reversal in the higher strip, comes into the corner and a nice flying forearm smash into the 
the corner, comes off the rope, pulls it up with a clothesline. And he sends Brian Kyle to the outside. And this is not what I would have expected at the onset of this contest. The only thing I can think right now is Brian Kyle may be playing a little bit of cat and mouse with him, just toying with him, letting him think that the advantage is his, while he goes to the outside, destroys the momentum, and gets back in the ring to devour him for lunch. But I do have to ask you, these guys, you know, Brian Kyle, is, we're waiting on him to get back in the ring, but I do have to ask you, Steve, is what Carlton's doing, do you think, like, whatever's wrong with him, whatever is going on, do you think it's getting into the head of Brian Kyle a little bit? I certainly don't know if it's going to be. If anything, the one thing that might be distracting at this point is how absolutely ridiculous Sir Carlton looks. And it's like I said at the beginning of this match, Sir Carlton certainly isn't all there. He thinks he's the knight of the round table representing England. He suddenly believes that Yorkshire pudding and scones are something that a grown man would want to eat in the mountain state. And a man that thinks like that is a man that doesn't think like a redneck. And if you don't know how to think like a redneck, if you don't have that killer instinct, if you don't have that presence of mind in a contest like this, you're not going to walk away the victor. You're going to walk away with your head held in shame like the mangy mutt that Sir Carlton really is. Brian Kyle whipped into the ropes. And a nice hip toss by Sir Carlton. And you see Kyle going back into the corner, but he's in the ropes. Sir Carlton cannot, cannot continue his onslaught at this point. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about ring psychology. You always want to know where you are, and when you're in the corner, when you're in the ropes, your opponent can't freely go to town on you. He's in the corner with his buddies in the gift of Raj. I mean, I just... And what Once corner again. would you rather be in as the champion than the corner of the gift of Raj? If ever there was a group that's going to have your back, the knows the meaning of the words respect and loyalty, it's the gift of Raj. And you see Brian Kyle just holding on to that arm lock, just torquing the wrist of Sir Carlton, making use of his leverage advantage, sending him off the ropes now. Sir Carlton reverses it, going for a hip toss, but he gets caught! He gets caught with one heck of a lariat by Brian Kyle, the legit hit, getting ready to put him to rest this early in the bout. Bounding off the ropes, going for an information point, big leg drop across the throat of Sir Carlton that's already nearly been decapitated, and only a two count. Brian Kyle can't believe it, and neither can I. Will you please, just for this match, stop being partisan? Just for this match. Stop being partisan. A moment ago, you were asking me to be partisan. Oh, be partisan. I'm sorry. Excuse me. And you, you got see, me all you see here, Sir Steven. Carlton in there, weaving back and forth, bobbling around as much as you do during a contest, trying to make believe that a Cinderella story is going to strike twice when it's obvious that Brian Kyle is not going to let lightning in a bottle be a product that Sir Carlton can purchase. Brian Kyle makes a splash. Sir Carlton follows it up with a drop kick and goes for a cover. Out at one. Brian Kyle first went to his feet. Uh, oh security. my god! Oh my god! Concussion City! That was a massive insecurity kick to the head of Carlton. And for a man that's already lost so many valued brain cells over the years, I don't know if the referee should continue to allow Sir Carlton to continue in this contest. Well, what's Brian Kyle? He goes off the ropes and a big splash on the chest of Carlton. With a two count only. Brian Kyle questioning the referee's count, and I certainly would at this point. The referee's obviously been slowly counting, trying to give Sir Carlton that chance to get the win he so desperately dreamed of for so long. But it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You can just see him looking up, just begging Brian Kyle, please don't hurt me anymore. Carlton with some sick shots with the jaw of Brian Kyle. Sir Carlton right in the turnbuckle. Sir Carlton ducks the lariat. Big headbutt into the head of Brian Carlton. Just a repeated series. Headbutt after headbutt just brutalizing Brian Kyle. You know, often I have very little trouble keeping up with descriptive terms for a maneuver that's used in the contest. But that headbutt maneuver of Sir Carlton is so favored by himself and his brother that there aren't enough descriptive words in the dictionary to call the way that they perform them. Well, Carlton with a huge side rush and leg sleeve got a two count. You see Sir Carlton's making a big mistake right here, keeping his eyes on King Richard when he should be watching Brian Kyle. And whoa, whoa, almost, almost. But the presence of mind by Brian Kyle and King Richard is firmly, firmly shown in that exchange. Sir Carlton reverses an Irish whip. Big clothesline, flying 
clothesline by Sir Carlton. And look at King Richard here. What did King Richard do right there? What did he, he do? He reached in the ring and grabbed his foot. Oh my lord! A little bit of hate in the gift right there. And a roll up out of nowhere. And the and crowd wins the match. I can't believe my eyes. Oh, my ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, lightning has struck twice and a Cinderella story. A Cinderella story is indeed in the making for the boys from the trailer park. And I can't believe my eyes. And certainly Brian Kyle can't believe his eyes. The gift of rush has got to be wondering what's going on here. They're the hottest faction in wrestling. And these two boys who grew up eating grits, who grew up wondering where their next meal was coming from, getting ready to eat their pet chicken for breakfast, have somehow, somehow managed to pull out two massive fluke wins. To answer you, I didn't like it at all. And anyone who has a brain in this arena didn't like it. Well, the big story coming outside of this is, is there's some tension going on in the gift garage. I mean, you saw what happened there. You think there's tension going on in the gift garage? That's not tension. That's disbelief. But you can better believe coming out here next week when a television title shot is offered to Sir Carlton, their head's going to be in the game and they're going to be on the same page because that's what they are. They're winners, they're champions, they keep their head in the game. June 12th, Hidden West Virginia. Gear up, because the people champ is in the house and we're going to do it like never before. NWA Mountain State style, coming at you. Bring your mamas, bring your babies, bring your grandpas, bring your grandmamas, bring them all. Because Strozilla is going to breathe some fire and the maestro of wrestling is going to ooh la la. All y'all, all night long. Good morrow, Mountain State fans. I have great news for all of you fans in Alderson, West Virginia. On June 18th, we, Mountain State Wrestling, will be in Alderson. That is myself, Lord Carlton, along with Earl Dykes Jr., my brother and tag team partner, and all the other Mountain State superstars. Come on down. Saturday night, June 19th, Mount Hope, West Virginia, Diablo, Tenney. We will be there, 7.30 bell time. And it don't matter if it's the Urban Death Squad or the Gift Garage. It doesn't matter, because when we're coming to town, somebody's getting knocked out. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's go and get comments from the Mountain State Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Johnny Blast, Spider Crowley, Urban Death Squad, followed by comments by their challengers, Dwayne Tinney and Diablo Jr. Gentlemen, on this morning's episode, today you will be defending your tag team titles. You have been dominating since you have been here, but many say that your time is numbered. What do you say to your critics? I don't say anything to my critics because they're not worthy of me saying anything to them. There's a new number one contender around here every stinking week. I don't care who it is. I don't care if the crowd likes them or if the crowd hates them because it doesn't matter to us. We're the tag team champions and whoever's in the ring with us, whether it's Tenny and Diablo or the Gift Garage or Maestro and whoever or whoever and whoever or the two referees, or the two announcers. We don't care. Whoever's across the ring from us is feeling the same thing. They're going to feel pain. They're going to feel agony. They're going to feel us stomping all over them. Is Diablo's sister around because I need another margarita? I don't know. Gentlemen, this morning you are going for the tag team titles. You have been on a roll in gaining the number one contendership. What are you going to do to make sure that you go home today, the tag team champions? Well, you know, me and Johnny Blast have our history, and he thinks he traded me in for a new partner, but I traded him in. If it wasn't for me, he would have never had the tag titles that we had together. It was all me, and he's going to find out today when me and Tenny take them titles. The Bunkhouse Boys came out and said they was the best. J.C. Dykes Jr. and Curl, champions so many times. Who do we beat? Both of them at once. So it doesn't matter. Bring your tag team titles. Bring all the weapons you can bring. Bring your whoever. Titles are coming home to this one and this one. That's the only two you need to worry about. 
Spider Crowley and Johnny Blast have the mindset of two men who've been teaming together for a long time. They've been up and down the roads together for a while, and that is one important advantage going into a contest like this. by the fans for the challengers. of the Mountain State, showing no respect whatsoever for the champion. Will you stop? Will I stop what? Calling it like it is? Calling it like I see it? Absolutely not. I'm the voice of reason and a land where sanity is going out the door. But when you're calling it like it is, that's your opinion. Like These fans have the right to not like the champions. Well, they my opinion... right to not like the champions. Excuse me, but my opinion is that I'm right like I always am, and I'm calling it like I see it, like I always do, because that's my job as an announcer. I don't get paid to come out here and say what you want to say, you corporate parrot. If that's what they wanted for me, if that's what the real outlaws out there wanted to hear, then that's when they would have asked somebody with the same mindset as you to come out here. But they didn't ask for somebody else like you, they asked for somebody exactly like me. And I'm going to be firmly behind Spider and Blast in this contest because they are the champions, they deserve respect, and they, they, my friend, are the reason that we have butts and seats this evening. They came to see the champions. Well, let's see which one of the champions is going to start this match off. Because obviously in Diablo Jr., Dwayne Tenney, Dwayne Tenney is starting it off. So it looks like it's going to be Dwayne Tenney and Johnny Blast starting this match off tonight. Well, Tenney and Blast starting this contest off, they're circling each other in the ring looking for position. And you gotta wonder, you gotta wonder what's going through the minds of Tenny and Diablo Jr. Because they really are a makeshift tag team. Their pairing came out of nowhere at the last second. They want to have more gold to their resume. Well, they've got a heck of a task on their hands this night. Like I said at the beginning of this contest, before the bell even rang, they've got a heck of a contest going to town against Spider and Blast. You see Tenny, a big side headlock on Blast, trying to ground the big man, test out his strength, and see if he's going to be able to maintain the leverage advantage in this contest during the rest of this evening. Diablo Jr. and Dwayne Tenney have the obvious quickness advantage for Diablo Jr. And by that shoulder block right there, it looks like they have a little bit of strength and quick or speed advantage with Dwayne Tenney. Well, they may have a quickness advantage over Blast and Spider, but one thing that they do not have is the experience advantage. And the experience advantage allows you to know how to counteract momentum. It allows you to know how to counteract speed. It allows you to counteract agility. You may be flying through the air, but if you get caught and you get slammed down, you're going to end up with a broken bone. And you see right now, Blast firmly in control of that arm lock, bringing it down to the mat, keeps a firm hold on that wrist lock, just dragging up on him, trying to wrench that arm out of socket and destroy Tenny's abilities to fully utilize the strikes that he's so renowned for. That's right, and now we see the hillbilly chupacabra in the ring. This man is a mysterious individual. He wears a mask. I don't know why he wears a mask, but my guess is he's wearing a mask to hide the fact that he has the ugliest face in the history of professional wrestling. Chupacabras are long known for how disgusting they are to look at. Well, Diablo Jr. is just firmly in control of this match right now. He's got a... Uh, and you see Diablo Jr. stepping on the hand of Johnny Blast. And he's looking out for the fans asking what they should do when he should know well enough already what he's supposed to do at that point. You're supposed to stay on top of the man. You're supposed to have that killer instinct. Well played to the fans. I will give you credit. It did, it did allow Spider to get the tag. And 
Now, a drop toe hold by Diablo Jr. gets him back in control of this contest. Look at Diablo Jr. just playing around with Spider Crowley. And do you see the look in the eye of Spider? He's not happy with what Diablo Jr. is oh, doing. Whatever. Nobody's happy with that. And you certainly see this from the sounds of the fans that they don't appreciate Spider taking a break to the outside. But it doesn't matter what the fans think. It only matters what the champions do and how they walk out of this contest with the belts. Spider did not tag or Johnny Blast, did he? No, he certainly did it, but one thing he did do tag. is create an opportunity to get a breather. Once again, destroying the momentum of Diablo Jr. You see Diablo Jr. rushing the ropes there. Spider's not going to fall for it. He's going to take his time. He's going to get in the ring. And he's going to take control. Mark my words. And you see Spider looking over in the corner at Kenny when he's circling Diablo Jr., not losing focus, not allowing Kenny to go for the cheap shot that he most likely would have gone for. Well, both of these competitors in the ring right now are the speed of the both, both respective teams. But it just seems like Diablo Jr. is just a little bit quicker than Spider. Well, Diablo Jr. may be a little bit quicker, but you got to remember the height advantage of Spider. He has quite a bit of a reach on Diablo Jr., which should allow him to stay firmly in control of this contest in a grappling situation. As long as he knows to use his leverage, which he does, because as I've said time and time again, he does have an experience advantage over Diablo Jr. Diablo Jr. going behind him with a waist lock. Diablo Jr. just playing around with him again. Well, you can play around with a lion for as long as you want, but eventually, if you play with a lion too much, he's going to eat you for breakfast. Um, now get him out of here. Get Johnny Blast out of this match. <laughs> now Diablo Jr. is playing with him. Well, Diablo Jr. may think it's a good idea to poke the bear with a stick, but remember, when you poke a bear with a stick, you're going to make the bear mad. And that certainly isn't an intelligent thing to do when you weigh about 120 pounds, soaking wet, wearing a backpack full of bricks. We have a collar and elbow tie-up. A collar and elbow tie-up, but Diablo Jr. is not the most intelligent thing you can do against a man that has a leverage and a reach advantage. Oh, Out of nowhere, a spinning head scissors takedown to Spider, and yes, Speed Spider going directly out of the ring, crawling down around the ringside area, looking up at the apron, staying right by his partner, Johnny Blast, who's going to keep this contest from being even more unfair than it's already been with the shenanigans of Diablo Jr. trying to show so much disrespect for the champions. You see Diablo Jr. trying to talk over strategy with Kenny, and you can certainly expect some underhanded tactics by these guys. You've seen what sportsmen they are a couple of weeks ago when they stole a victory from their friends, J.C. Dykes Jr. and Carl. Uh, some could say it's steal, some say ruthless aggression. It was every, every team for himself in that match. Every so team for themselves, but it certainly, served, it certainly showed the stripes of Diablo Jr. and Kenny to take advantage of a man that was hit with a foreign object. And you see the referee's count there. Spider knows well enough what number he's up to. He certainly didn't study in Mexico, so he knows how to count to 10 in English. Tag into Johnny Blast, but tag in also to the reckoning Dwayne Kenny. And once again, Johnny Blast knee to the midsection of Dwayne Tinney, clubbing forearm to the back, and a stomp to the head, driving his head down to the canvas. Johnny Blast brings Dwayne Tinney back up, slams his head into the turnbuckle. And the UFC fighter certainly looks like he's been hit by some of the hardest hit blows he's ever been hit in his life, but just as soon as I say that, you see a hip toss and a big body slam by the Reckoning. And this word shows the Reckoning. strength advantage in that exchange, but he certainly didn't get the pinfall. And there he tags, directly tags in Diablo Jr. Holding Blast open, big shot to the midsection of Blast. Diablo Jr. now backing Blast back into the corner, sends him into the other corner. He's coming in ahead of steam. Johnny Blast too smart for that move though. You see the big size 11 boot to the face of Diablo Jr. Diablo Jr. right now probably wishes he was back in the trailer park eating a goat. 
and a nice back suplex by Johnny Blast. Johnny Blast right now, literally, literally walking all over Diablo Jr. Measuring him, follows it up with an elbow. Count of two. Only two. Now, now Blast bringing Diablo Jr. back up. Hooks the arms. Fighter. Foot to the abdomen. Get, okay, he had a count of five to get out of there and he got out of four, so that's fair enough. Of course it's fair. He did it by the rule. Spider with a giant suplex there. Like right? taller man. Two. And Diablo one. Two. And Diablo kicks out once again. And a lot of fans are watching this and wonder why he keeps going back to the same pinfall when he didn't get the pin the first time. But why he's doing every time he puts that arm over top of Diablo Jr., he's forcing him to use the little energy he has left at this point to kick out of the momentum maneuver. It's a wear down maneuver that not many people will recognize or appreciate, but you certainly have to see that Spider knows what he's doing in that ring right now, and he's got Diablo Jr. on the run. Diablo Jr. is trying to get section with Spider right back at him. They're trading blows in the ring. But every time Diablo oh, Jr. gets a shot Diablo in, Jr. Spider counteracts it. Lays him in position. Terrific elbow by Spider. Signaling for another one. Follows up, picture perfect. Spider bounding off the ropes. Are we going to see it? Oh, no. We're got a giant leg drop. And a hook of the legs. A complete near fall. Goes back to that choke call. Referees had to get on to him about three or four times in this match for that right now. Well, the referees only had to count to four or three or four times. Spider knows the rules of this business. He's playing it by the book. All he's doing is getting the advantage that he knows he just needs to have in this contest to walk out the victory. The double team in there. On Diablo Jr., both of them throwing the elbows. Into the chest of Diablo Jr. Diablo Jr. looking up at Blast now. Blast and Spider have made use of a lot of quick tags now, using a lot of high impact maneuvers to ground Diablo to keep him from flying around that ring and making use of the agility and the speed advance that we talked about. Blast dropping the fist right to the face. And a fist from the heavens and by Johnny Blast. Johnny Blast questioning the ref's count, and he certainly should. It looks slow to me, and it looks slow to you. I, I thought it was pretty fair. Of course you would. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh. A great kneeling surfboard into the back of Diablo Jr. As many slams and suplexes as, he's a, as he has had to uh, absorb during this contest. That's a great maneuver. Diablo Jr.'s back's already worn down. His upper body, especially his upper back, mid-back, lower back, aren't feeling good at this point. Right, looking over Johnny Blast. Oh, nice. Oh, drop. But will he get the tag? The Absolutely tag not. Absolutely not. As soon as you think he has momentum, Spider's in there to take it away from him. And you see him with almost a modified cross face, maybe more of a modified chin lock, just pulling back on Diablo, Damaging the neck, damaging the back, even further than it's already been damaged in this contest. He's biting the eye of Diablo Jr. How is that fair? Biting the eye, getting inside of the head, giving him a wake-up call, whatever you want to call it, it's certainly effective. Diablo Jr. and Spider into the corner, and back to the other corner. And Spider with a big close line down to the mat. Diablo Jr., as you've seen him so much of the match for about the last five minutes, laying face down, laying on his back or laying on his stomach. He's not doing too much high flying right now. Blast and Spider have effectively grounded the faster man in the contest, taking away the advantage that he primarily would have in this contest. And at this point, you've got to wonder what Diablo Jr. is going to do to get out of this trouble situation. He's got to make the tag, Steve. He has to make the tag. He's tag team partner. 
He certainly has to make a tag, but Blast and Spider have firmly drawn a line in the sand. They've issued the challenge to Diablo Jr. to make a tag, and Diablo Jr. hasn't been able to make it because they know where that line is. They know when to cut him off. He might seem like he has a shot of getting his hand out there, but they're going to cut him off every time, pull him back away from Kenny, and keep the advantage in their corner, in the corner of the champions. It just seems like instinct that he's throwing those legs up. But... And a drop kick off the top rope by Diablo Jr. But you see, when he came off that top rope, he may have shoved those boots into the chest of Blast, but he also, he also landed on the ground on his back. And that back has already been worked on for the majority of this contest. It may seem like that should give him an advantage, but it's definitely weakened him. Even if he gets the tag, it may keep him from being the man that you can count on in this match. But the tag is Wade Tinney, and good God almighty, a big series of clotheslines, a big slam on blast, and Tinney is looking dominant. But a pair of races to the eye stops that momentum dead in its tracks. And Blast and Spider getting ready to whip Tinny and Junior into each other. A reversal. And good God almighty, two great minds may have just met. But it's not the way they would like to meet in this contest. It's like smashing a coconut against the skull when you collide with another man like that. And Dwayne Tinny with an Irish whip into a torque armbar. And a sunset flip by Diablo Junior. And a double team maneuver. And oh my God. I cannot believe this! I cannot believe this! Spider and Flash have been robbed! The Hillbilly Chupacabre and the Reckoning are now the Mountain State Wrestling Tag Team Champions of the World! They were talking about Cinderella stories all night. How about this Cinderella story? Well, Just a few short weeks ago, they were paired up together for the first time. And now they're the Tag Team Champions! Well, you may be happy, and the Muppets may be happy, but me and the Outlaws at home, we know, we know every dog has its day, and the days are not over for Spider and Blast! Spider and Blast! certainly have a rematch clause in their contract. What a match we just had. Diablo Jr. and Dwayne Tinney walking away with the victory over Johnny Blast and Spider Crowley, now the Mountain State Wrestling Tag Team Champions of the World. We'll see more great action right after this timeout. West Virginia has some of the strongest consumer credit protection laws in the nation. If you have been receiving multiple phone calls from debt collectors, credit card companies, and even other law firms trying to collect a debt from you or a family member, you may be entitled to compensation. Call Wesley White for a free case evaluation to see if your rights have been violated by unfair debt collection. We'll get you compensated. We'll stop the phone calls. Call Wesley today at 304-664-9201. Welcome back, fans. Now we will hear comments coming from one-third of the Gift Garage, Dynamite Derek Billing, followed by comments from the Maestro. Fans, I'm here with Gift Garage, Derek Billings. This morning you will be facing Stro in probably one of the most dangerous matches, the Coal Miner's Glove match. What do you think? You know what? Stro, how many times have I left you laying in the center of that ring? You just don't know how to quit, do you? You have heart, and I'll give you that. But tonight, I'm going to rip it from your chest. <laughs> Stro, you've been wrestling around the world and probably been in every type of conceivable match. <laughs> how are you going to contend with this very dangerous match, the Coal Miners Glove match, and the members of the Gift Garage at ringside? Well, you know, the history of Gift Raj and myself, I mean, the people know all about it. We've been around so many times from the heavyweight champ, Ricky Shane, down to Dynamite Derek Billings, the former champ, down to the current television champion, Brian Kyle. Uh, it's going to be a task. Coal Miners Glove match, one of the most dangerous matches in our business. But I'm going to tell you, Dynamite Derek Billings, like I tell everybody else I step in the ring with, I go at 110, I got the people behind me, and no matter what happens, we're going to come out on top. And when I grab that coal miner's glove and I raise it to people, that's going to be our victory. And our victory over the gift to Raj. And King Richard, heavyweight champ, I hope you're watching. Because when we grab that glove and claim that victory, you're next. Ooh la la. Come up for you. 
here in the preview. So we'll just have to see how we go. A title shot is a far cry from a title. So let's go to Jonathan Styles. merchandise sales, it's on the kids, it's on the fans, Dynamite Derek Billings, his mind is on the win. Speaking of the gift rods, what do you think about the two standing out there right now? And what happened earlier? Do like, you think that they're in each other's head? Do you think that they're gonna, do you think that they'll be, do you think that they'll get involved in this match? I mean, I right now they're just playing it up to the crowd, but we'll just have to see what happens. Well, you may wonder if they're going to get involved in this match, but they've been involved the second they walk through that court curtain. They're here to show support for Dynamite Derek Billings. They're here to help him with the strategy and his game plans. And you see words of encouragement there from Brian Kyle to Dynamite Derek Billings, who stays on task, runs straight out the ropes, flying off the apron, forearm shot to the back of the caveman, the maestro. God, there's chops. They're just trading chops between one another. The whole match is brutal sounding. They may have sounded brutal, but the caveman reaching up with that big hand of his just choking Dynamite Derek Billings and good lord almighty that caveman skull headbutt to the midsection of Derek Billings and I called knife edge chops for a reason. I can't believe he didn't cut right through the chest of Derek Billings. That man is mean, that man is strong. He might not be honest, I might not like him, but he is tough. 
Second, seemingly, saved this match for himself. And Derek Billings comes around the corner. The throw took his eyes off of Derek Billings when he should have been keeping up on the advantage, talking to the fans, being a glad hander. Derek Billings, though, stayed on pass, came around the corner, caught him with a shot to the head, threw him back in the ring, and you see the tail of the tape right now. Derek Billings firmly in control of this match. Ooh, Just Derek. driving that foot straight through, straight through the Stroh's head. I can't believe that his brain is still in his body and it ain't come flying out with this right ear drum. You know, the Maestro getting back up to his feet and Derek Billings just with those forearm shots to the head. The Stroh trying to chop back. And there's Stroh breaks loose and they're just trading chops back and forth and they sound brutal. They certainly do a big double hand chop by the caveman looking down at Dynamite Derek Billings. But you see, you see looking at him walk around there, he's winded, he's winded. His head's not quite as focused as it was early in this contest. Big knee straight to the jaw of Derek Billings by the strobe. You see the strobe again though, pointing out at the gift garage, mouthing off to them when he should have stayed on task, should have stayed on top of Derek Billings, who just took him down with a modified toe hold is now going for a spinning toe into a figure four leg lock. And nobody, nobody in this business, past, present, or future, has ever done a figure four as effectively as Derek Billings. A nice looking figure four, but we'll see if... The stro looks like he kind of broke it up. Well, the stro certainly, with those big ham hock plays of this, he's got a lot of power behind those. He's able to counter that maneuver already, chopping away at the thigh of Derek Billings. That shot right there is not so much a wear down the hold as much as it is a stinging blow to distract Derek Billings. But now the Stro coming back with a figure four leg lock of his own, using the weight advantage, placing that foot directly over the knee of Derek Billings, trying to force a submission, but it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Derek Billings has too much will to survive in a high profile main event match like this. Slapping the knee causes. Causes the stray to break the hold. You know, I mean, it's just, those shots in the knee, they've got to hurt. That's what I was talking about with the willingness to survive. You see Derek Billings, trouble situation? No, sir. He was there for about 10 seconds. The Stroh's been there the majority of the match. Derek Billings knows how to stay on point. He knows what's on the line. He wants that winner's purse, and he's going to remind everyone that the gift garage is the dominant force in Mountain State Wrestling. And that was Stroh looking, knocking Derek Billings into the corner. And Big battering ram like shoulder blocks by the Stroh on Dynamite Derek Billings. And now the Stroh calling out to the fans again. Oh Lord have mercy, that just got a sting. Rapid fire shots by the Maestro on Dynamite Derek. And you see King Richard trying to wake Dynamite Derek up, getting back into the contest. Ooh, the Stroh running out of the corner. Hits him prominently with his knee straight to the head of Derek Billings. Another maestro making a move for it, making a go for it. We'll see what happens here. But Derek Billings back up. Derek Billings with a kick to the head knocks him down. That's right, Derek Billings back up, back on the big man, not letting up for a moment, not letting up on a second. He is focused, he is in control, and that's what he wants to be when you have a man as big as the straw in the ring. There's going to the six. Oh, big chop to the back. And now forearm shots to the head. And now. And you see Dime out Derek holding him. Oh, and that is the second of the night. Brian Kyle has hit somebody in the gift arrive. And a super kick by the Stroh. Brian Kyle, King Richard. This and a super kick by the Maestro. And I can't believe what's going on here. The Maestro got the and coal the miners miners glove. And the Maestro has the coal miner's glove in his hand. You see the Stroh in the corner there, clenching the fist. I hope he's real happy with himself here. He's getting ready to go out there and go to work on the gift garage, I believe, but no, no, maybe not. Maybe he's going to do the wise thing and stay out of the way and retreat to the back before he gets eaten for breakfast. Well, the numbers game, the numbers game's 
know, the gift arrives that, you know, it didn't work for him tonight. The, the fact that there's three of them just did not work for him. And the fact that Brian Kyle has clotheslined both Derrick Billings and King Richard tonight, like, that's got to be getting into the gift of Roger's head. But on the other side of the ring, you have the maestro talking to, little, talking to the little kids that ran West Virginia. And this has just been a fun, wonderful night here. What a match we just saw to wrap up the hour. Now we will see where NWA Mountain State Wrestling is coming to. June 18th, 2010, Alderson, West Virginia. You know what, NWA Mountain State fans? The Gift Raj tells everyone week in and week out how amazing we are. Well, you know what? We've gotten to a point where you people just don't get it through your heads. June 18th, come out and see that actions do speak louder than words. Saturday, June 19th in Mount Hope, tell them. We're at the community center, and that's where you're going to be too. The Urban Death Squad is coming to town, Mount Hope. You haven't seen anything like us, and you won't see anything like us after we leave either. The 19th, Mount Hope, the community center. It's the National Wrestling Alliance. It's Mountain State Wrestling. It's you and us. <laughs> We're back, and what a week we've had. J.C. Dykes Jr. and Carl both getting upset victories over the champions of the Gift Garage, looking at title shots in their future. Dynamite. Derek Billings fell up short against the Maestro in the Coal Miners Glove match. And the bigger story this evening, Tag Team Championships changed hands when Dwayne Tinney and Diablo Jr. upset Johnny Blast and Spider Crowley. And we want to say to everyone out there, have a safe and happy Memorial Day. And to all our high school seniors out there, congratulations on graduating. And remember, be safe, don't drink, and drive. This is Professor Wrestler Jimmy Vang, the Boogie Woogie Man. Tell all my people, all my brothers and sisters, don't you dare miss this one. N.W.A. Mountain State Wrestling on Fox W.V. Oh yeah!